Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sean of Third Rail Find. I hope you're having a beautiful day today. So right off the bat, do like, subscribe, share, help me grow this channel. Follow me on Rumble, on Twitter. I mean, on YouTube as well, if you want. YouTube will not monetize me because I cover these kinds of stories. Today we'll be talking about euthanasia, but I also I, I talk about all the other serious stories you may not find on the other talking heads. So if you're really feeling frisky, I mean, here's a PayPal link if you know, because I can't be super chatted unless, of course, you follow on Rumble. So that's why Rumble is super duper important. They're free speech. They don't say, Sean, hey, listen, we don't like when you cover stories of, of kids or animals being harmed. Well, that's what my audience wants. That's what I find interesting. That's what I'm going to cover. Anyways, all of that being said, do like, subscribe, share, all of those things. And uh, let's, let's begin, shall we? All right. So we're talking about euthanasia, which coincidentally, when I was young and stupid, so like 15 minutes ago, I'm actually talking about when I was just a wee boy in school and I had to do like debates pros and cons. I had no idea what euthanasia was. I'm like, why are we talking about Asian children? The Chinese kids are fine making their, their clothing. They're fine making their electronics. What? You know, I had no idea. Nobody, nobody ever sat me down and was like, hey, this is euthanasia. It's crazy. I know. That's the Canadian education system. It's, it's communist. But euthanasia is bad. I don't agree with it. Except for a very small, very precise sliver where I think it's it's fine. Canada has gone so far beyond that. They're basically allowing everyone to do it for any reason at all. And it kind of like causes a societal breakdown a little bit. So from the Daily Mail here, we have Canada's scary record-breaking double-digit jump in euthanasia deaths. So something that has gone from you're staring down the barrel of a horrific, painful, debilitating death where all other medications and whatever has been tried, nothing is working. So you've opted to go gracefully and peacefully on your terms to I have allergies. I'm going to I'm going to off myself. I have um an inability to find adequate housing. I'm going to off myself. I'm sad. I can't get adequate health care. So I guess I'll get death care. Like these are the the kinds of things that Canadians are are facing. But it's also when you go to your doctor and you say, hey, doc, can I get this kind of health care or can I get this whatever? They now push it on you. They immediately say, but have you considered made? No, I haven't. I'm just looking for a stair lift. But have you considered killing yourself so we don't have to install the stair lift? It's 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 it, it, we have long. We have long left like noble good intentions. And we've we have we have delved deep into just evil leftist communist things. Well, you know, we're offering this to people who are at the end of their lives, who are facing a horrific ending. But to not offer it to this other group is that's just discrimination. Well, no, it's not. That's what the liberals say. And then, so the next group is allowed. But it's discrimination to then not allow this other group. But then it's discrimination to not allow this other group. But then it's discrimination to not allow this other group. And eventually, it's, it's suicide for all, all the time, no matter what. It is, it is Justin Trudeau's Canada. So Canada is on track to break euthanasia records once again with 15,280 doctor-assisted suicide deaths in 2023, 
a 15% jump on the previous year, the campaign group warns. And do you know what of all of this is the absolute most hilarious thing? It's that you can get euthanasia for whatever reason you want. You can be homeless. You can have allergies. You can be sad. You can whatever just because you feel like it. But one young individual from Alberta, a, a, um, a, a transgendered individual, a, a male who transitioned into a female, had all the surgeries. The surgeries didn't go well, causing them debilitating pain where they, they, can't, even, they can't even live anymore. Because the pain of, of their, trans, uh, their, um, their transition is so bad. They went to uh, get their euthanasia papers. They were denied. They are the only person I have ever read about or know about that has been denied. Because, you know, Justin Trudeau couldn't have one of his, his two SLGBTQ LMNOP individuals go through euthanasia medical assistant, uh, assistance in dying because of a failed transition. You can't have that. Everyone else, absolutely. So you have this Aboriginal girl, First Nations, trans individual. They kept being refused. But everyone else, that's, it, it's evil. It's diabolical. I, I believe this, this policy, the way we have it, causes maximum harm. The other countries, like Switzerland, for example, or Belgium, or Netherlands, or wherever, all the other countries, and there's a handful of other countries in Europe that allow euthanasia, they look at Canada and they go, what are you doing? These other countries, the doctors are not even allowed to bring it up. It's not a medical option unless the patient very specifically requests it to be a medical option. Only then is the doctor allowed to even discuss it with them. And then there has to be all kinds of hurdles, psychologists and whatnot. Like, they go out of their way to make it not a, a, an option as hard as possible. Canada, they're throwing it at you. Literally. The doctors are asking, but have you considered me? No! I haven't considered dying! I just want a house to live in. I just want a, a wheelchair ramp. I'm only here for antibiotics. Like, we've gone off the rails. I implore every country on the earth, do not be like Canada. The Euthanasia Prevention Coalition says growing numbers of people who are not terminally ill now use the government's doctor-assisted suicide program known as MAID, Medical Assistance in Dying. They include sufferers of autoimmune conditions, diabetes, and chronic pain who may be able to live for many more quality years if they had better health care. Canadian health care is a disaster. 10, 15, 20 years ago, I would have happily dunked on any American. I would have absolutely bragged that our, our health care system was far superior, and it was. Absolutely, some of the best on this earth. Best in the world healthcare. Now we have some of the worst in the world healthcare. Still to this day, we have hospitals. My local hospital refuses to hire back any doctors or nurses or support staff, like porters and, and such, that are unvaccinated. Still, to this day, it's shocking. Everyone, including politicians, go, oh my God, where did all the doctors and the nurses go? Why can't we get support staff? Well, have you considered hiring these people back? I can't, I can't hear you. Oh my God, we don't have these people. Even though each province is responsible for its own health care, it's the same type of idiots at the top of each province. So the same mistakes get made. So Canadian healthcare should theoretically be different, but it's all the same. The same morons are running it. And then you have this federal nonsense where you have Trudeau at the head of it. And it's a disaster. Our healthcare is an abomination.
My second youngest boy came home with a MRSA infection, MRSA, M methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. It's a it's a hospital born infection. It's a super bug. It's it's contagious. It's awful, and you can die from it. The hospital did not tell us. They're like, oh no, it's fine. He'll be fine. He got very sick, incredibly sick. They still did not tell us. They gave us antibiotics. But they did not tell us what the infection was. I don't even think they swabbed to find out. And then we all got sick. We're still dealing with the consequence. And this was years ago this happened. Our health care is awful. The projection comes amid growing concerns over the expansion of Canada's eight-year-old euthanasia program and more cases of anguished family members ending up in courts. Alex Shandenberg, director of the coalition, uh, says ever more people are approved for euthanasia even when they suffer from nothing more than frailty and other seemingly benign conditions. Here we have this little map here. In 2016, it was 1,000 people. And now we're over 15,000 people. It's a, it's a staircase. It's literally a staircase. So in 2024, we're probably looking at six, no, it'd be 17 or 18,000. In 2025, we're looking at 20, 22,000. In 2026, we're looking at 25, 30,000 people. Like it's just getting higher and higher and higher because they keep opening the gates of who, who's allowed in. It's scary how the system is getting looser. Doctors are signing the paperwork and people who didn't meet the original criteria have become eligible. Canadians, by wide margins, support euthanasia, and the, campaign, and the campaign group Dying with Dignity says procedures are driven by compassion, an end to suffering and discrimination and desire for personal autonomy. And yeah, a large group of Canadians absolutely do support euthanasia, but it's within that fine sliver of, you have ALS, you, or you have a, a prion disease. You're, you're at the end of your life with rabies. Like, I mean, it's, or, or you have stage four cancer. Like, I mean, you're at the end of your life and it's only going to get worse and there is no saving you. And, and you choose to go out with dignity on your terms. Like, that's it. That's euthanasia. That's it. No one else. And many people might even say, no, that's, that's even too broad. Rights groups say the country's regulations lack necessary safeguards, devalue lives of disabled people, and prompt doctors and health workers to suggest the procedure to those who might not otherwise consider it, which is, these are all the things that all the other countries look at Canada and they laugh. They go, oh my God, that is insanity. Health Canada is expected to release its official made data for 2023 in the, in the coming months. Ahead of the annual report, Shattenberg uh, gathered uh, publicly available data from Ontario, Quebec, British Columbia, Manitoba, Alberta, and Nova Scotia and tallied them together. He estimated that 15,280 ended their lives with May last year, a 15.4% increase. And all of those places that I just said, that's not all of the provinces. And that's actually none of the territories. So this number could be significantly higher than that. MAID now accounts for 4.6% of all fatalities, making it the most common cause of death after cancer, heart disease, and accidental injuries. That is alarming. Like this is supposed to fall into that safe, legal, and rare kind of thing. And now it's the most common cause of death after cancer and heart disease and accidental injuries. Wow. About 60,238 people have died from MAID since the program was launched in 2016. While the number of assisted suicides has risen, there are signs that it is starting to level off. I, I guess that's the silver lining, then, isn't it? Between 2016 and 2022, the number of made cases jumped by about a third each year. Health Canada spokeswoman Anjanie 
said her colleagues were still compiling the 2023 numbers. And that's likely because there were so many that they, they probably are looking at them and going, oh my God, do we actually publish this number? Procedures are strictly controlled and are only available to those suffering from an incurable medical condition that puts them in advanced states of irreversible decline, Jinye told Daily Mail. Except that's how it was originally. Now it's open to anybody. The average age of a maid recipient is allegedly 77, and they are evenly split between men who account for 51.4 percent of the deaths in women who account for 48.6 though it's popular among canadians it, it's not it's not out, outside of that sliver of what what i said it's not popular people are really kind of creeped out by it the maid system has been dogged by high profile controversies in recent months a 27 year autistic calgary woman has made headlines by seeking an assisted suicide for what she calls intolerable suffering while her dad has tried to block the lethal injection in the court, saying there is nothing wrong with her. There's nothing wrong with her. She's just autistic. And that, that is one thing. If you put on your tinfoil hat here for a minute, you have Trudeau and his liberal goons basically kind of running some Nazi-style program to eliminate all the pain and the suffering and the defects and the disabled and all of that. Some sort of weird Nazi eugenics program. It, it has that feel to it. It's not entirely like that. I get that. But it has that feel about it. So much so that I think even McLean Magazine, he kind of even wrote the same thing. Like, it's got that kind of essence to it. It's kind of yucky. Imagine a future. And this is a part of my existential crisis, having four young autistic sons. Imagine a future where they start mating people, doing medical assistance and dying, against their will. You might consider that murder. I consider that murder. But my nonverbal son, he can't say no to it, can he? He can't technically say yes. So how is a court going to suss that out? A doctor can be like, oh, yeah, um, yeah, this boy, this man, has expressed interest. He's autistic. He doesn't feel so great. He doesn't have words. And then it happens. That is the dystopian future that I fear. That is why one of the reasons I, I hate this. I absolutely hate this. Last month, Canada was shocked by complaints from two sufferers of neurological problems who said it was easier to access MAID than access the alternative therapies that would help them live pain-free. Jody Lance, a 50-year-old Calgary resident, won a court battle so he could access psilocybin, the active ingredient in magic mushrooms, to stop his crippling cluster headaches. This country wants to give you like heroin and fentanyl and all kinds of things. So you can die on the street. There's free heroin. Just just take it. Here, here's a needle. Go in the back alley. But this guy's like, oh, I'd like some psilocybin so I can have a better, pain-free, more fulfilling life. He had to go to court. The government was like, no, you cannot have this thing that will make you better, more productive, pain-free. Instead, why don't we offer you something so you can die? It is becoming shockingly totalitarian authoritarian, dystopian, communist. It is awful. Yeah, our um, euthanasia is it's off, it's off the rails. It's absolutely off the rails. It's like Money Train. You ever see that? Uh, Wesley Snipes, Woody Harrelson, Jennifer Lopez, Money Train, the, you know, one scene closer to the end. They're on the Money Train in the New York subway. It's going really fast, and then, and then it starts flipping over. <laughs> That's, that's Canada right now with its euthanasia program. It's just a train just like flopping everywhere. So Canada's scary, record-breaking, double-digit jump in euthanasia deaths. Yep, that's made. Anyways, thank you for watching this, uh, this 
this video. It's a little long. I've, I, I kind of went off the rails a little bit on that, but uh, that's what I do. So anyways, I love you all. Thank you so much. And uh, remember, subscribe to me on Rumble if you can, because I, I, I cannot cover stories like this and be monetized on YouTube. They, they just won't allow it. They've told me that. And, uh, you know, also PayPal is, is a thing. Wink. I'm kidding. Anyways, I love you all. Thank you so much. Peace. Peace.